Hey everyone, today we're going to talk about calcium. And from a few weeks back, we know that calcium is one of the things that's stored in bones. And we're looking at microscopic bone structure. So let's talk about calcium for a minute. Calcium has a huge number of really important roles that it plays in your body. So here's a huge list of them. Um, it's the most abundant. It's about 2% of your total body weight, so you could figure that out. Um, your daily recommended amount is 1,000 to 1,200 milligrams a day. It keeps your bone and teeth strong, which you know. However, it's also involved in cell signaling, blood clotting, muscle contraction, nerve impulse transmission, enzyme activation, cellular transport, and regulating your heartbeat. So you got to get your calcium from somewhere. So when you think about calcium, the first thing you think of are dairy products. At least most people do. But some people don't eat dairy, so what else can they do to get their calcium? Well, there's a lot of places you can get it. All kinds of green vegetables and um, onions and Ooh, coconuts, uh, spinach, butternut squash, asparagus, some seeds. So lots and lots of places you can get calcium if you're not a dairy person. All right, so calcium needs to be in your blood to be used for most of those other things that were listed a minute ago. So the question is, how does it get into your blood and how is it regulated so you don't have too much or not enough? So that's what homeostasis is, is keeping things in balance so that you have as much as you need, but you don't have more than you need. And so let's take a look at this. So let's say that you just had, I don't know, let's see, a cheeseburger with a big glass of milk and then a giant ice cream cone and some kale. I don't know. <laughs> so you've got all this calcium getting into your bloodstream from your digestive system. So we're going to look at calcium homeostasis. Osteocytes you read about the other day. So these are mature bone cells. They're in the bone structure which you just looked at and they carry on normal metabolism. There are osteoblasts which actually pull calcium out of the blood and use it to build more bone tissue. So they build up the bone. The osteoclasts release calcium into the blood by breaking down the bone tissue and releasing that calcium that way. So Osteoblasts and osteoclasts are critical in this whole calcium homeostasis thing. So how does it work? All right, so let's say your blood calcium level goes up because you had that big meal of a kale salad with um, cheese in it and a big glass of milk and maybe some ice cream for dessert and you've got all this calcium. So your blood levels are going up. This actually is the thyroid gland which is located right at the base of your throat. It sort of surrounds your uh, voice box. Anyway, the thyroid gland, being a gland, produces hormones. And the hormone, or one of the hormones that the thyroid gland produces is calcitonin. Notice calcia for calcium. What calcitonin does is it stimulates the osteoblasts to deposit calcium in the bone. So they're pulling that calcium out of the bloodstream and putting it into bone tissue. So they're building up some bone there. And as they pull that calcium out of the bloodstream, the blood calcium levels return to normal. Now, at some point, the calcitonin uh, production by the thyroid is going to get shut off. So let's say it gets shut off um, 
But in the meantime, the, cal the extra calcitonin that was out there has now caused the calcium level in the blood to be too low. So let's take a look at that. The calcium level is now falling, and you need to have more calcium in your blood to have, so that your muscles and nerves and things have access to it. So we're looking at the thyroid gland again, but now we're looking at it posteriorly, so we're looking at it from behind. And embedded in the back of the thyroid gland are these four little pieces of tissue called the parathyroid glands. And the parathyroid glands produce another hormone called parathyroid hormone. It makes sense to me. So parathyroid hormone PTH. What that does is it stimulates the osteoclasts to break down some of the bone tissue and release calcium back into the blood in order for it to be available to all those other things that it needs to be available for. And as that happens, the blood calcium levels return to normal. And there you have it, calcium homeostasis. Thanks for listening.